Hey guys and gals, it's Logan Freeman and Alex Olson coming to you live from the Live Freeman studio. If you can see, believe it or not, I'm going to show you guys something. Look who it is. It's Mr. Alex Olson himself hanging out in the studio. So I thought that was pretty cool. Anyways, I uh, wanted to come to you guys and talk a little bit about some of the macroeconomic trends that are happening across the country and how we're kind of dialing those in here in the Kansas City market. So let's first start, start with, you know, we have to start off with the National Multifamily Housing Council's rent collection. So let's get a quick update on that. More than 90 or 79, I wish it was 97, more than 79% of the United States rental households have made rent payments as of October 6th. According to a just released report on rent collections from the National Multifamily Housing Council. And this report comes obviously after a month after the Trump administration announced a nationwide eviction moratorium through the end of the year and just a few days after the stimulus re relief talks between leaders in Congress were called off by President Trump. Now, there's there's a lot of things going on, right? I mean, we have uh, we have a Supreme Court justice seat to be filled. We have a general election happening. We have coronavirus. Trump gets coronavirus. Apparently, beats coronavirus. I, I mean, all of this stuff going on. But when it, at the end of the day, we still have to pay rents, and a lot of people still are paying rents. So let's continue down that track. So according to the study, 79.4% of rental households made full or partial rent payments by October 6th. This is unique because this is a figure that's unchanged from the same time last year. And a 3% increase from the same time last month when only 76.4% of renters had made payments. So Alex, I'm gonna need you to come off mute here for a second since we're in the same room, but I wanna get your take on that. Why are rent payments you know, seemingly the same as they were last year this time and three basis points, well, I guess that would be 300 basis points better than they were this time last year. So I'm just curious. <laughs> Sorry, my wife is making faces at me right there. So, T, this is a video that I can count, I can shoot you, I can I can call you out on. So, anyways, I'm curious, Alex. I'm gonna put myself on mute, and I want to hear kind of your thoughts on this. Like, why are we the same as we were last year? And I have my own thoughts, but I want to hear yours first. I think that you have to look at the actual overall. Uh, market and realize that people still have jobs okay I know that unemployment rate is devastating compared to where it has been but people still are employed it's 90 percent plus employment and, and um, people also understand that there's an obligation to pay just because there's no evictions that are going on right now doesn't mean that you still don't owe rent and at some point you got to pay it. And most people don't really like to be behind on their rent payments. Uh, you know, at least in my experience with tenants that I have, uh, you know, they, they pay and they, they want to pay. And, you know, you just have to uh, understand that the economy is based on, uh, part of it's based on paying your, either your house payment or your rent payment. And it's just going to hold true unless something catastrophic occurs. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think that it seems that many of the big players in the multifamily real estate world uh, have that same sentiment because more and more are becoming confident in the market. For example, multifamily heavyweight Morgan Properties has taken another bite out of the Class B apartment market by acquiring 18 communities at once in North and South Carolina. This is staggering. And it was over $323 million uh, on the acquisition. 
So that addition of 3,200 plus units of that portfolio more than doubles the company's unit count in the Carolinas while bringing its national platform close to 79,000 units. So I'm curious, you know, I always like to see uh, or at least evaluate why people are making decisions like they are. I have some other buddies out in the Carolinas who just did a 323 unit uh, apartment complex. And so long story short, I think that uh, if you just think about that, they went and bought over $300 million worth of real estate during the coronavirus pandemic. I don't know, Alex, about your analytical skills, but I have to believe that Morgan Properties has some really smart economists and data analysts making sure that their acquisitions do not backfire. And, you know, granted, the Charlotte's multifamily market has, has weathered the economic crisis relatively well. I think that Amazon has made some big bets out there in, in the Carolinas as well. And Jerome Myers is out there in the Carolinas. So maybe that's why they are, uh, you know, going out there. But you know, that their rents are still declining and they're, de they're declining by 0.3%. So it wasn't uh, a, a ton, but you know, it seems Alex that you and I have been speaking about the Kansas city multifamily market where we're one of only three markets in the country where we actually have positive rent growth and not only, you know, positive rent growth, three and a half percent positive rent growth. I mean, so that's all to say that when players in the real estate world make moves, we should obviously, and we should absolutely analyze them. And there's some differences from Morgan Properties than what you know our investors are typically doing, such as cost of capital, the ability to raise, you know, or to acquire these large properties without having to raise equity. So the ability to to move relatively fast. Uh, but the clues are still in the news. The underlying reasons that they're buying this type of real estate is the same for the big investor as it is a small investor. And we see those investors start to make those moves. And that's why this market commentary is, is comments or is, it's titled is ma the market is moving and the big players are setting the tone. So let's set, let's, you know, shift our focus to Kansas city, Missouri for a little bit. Uh, a New York investor picks up the fountain view on the plaza apartments for an undisclosed price. Well, I can tell you that, it was absolutely below a 5% cap rate. And the parallels between what Morgan Properties is doing in the Carolinas and what Abacus Capital is doing in Kansas City are a great indicator of the strength of our multifamily housing market. Fountain View is a 398 unit class A multifamily built in 1998 in a very desirable location. However, you know, I do think that Abacus felt comfortable with this purchase because of the economic and demographic markers in Kansas City, but along with the expansion of our streetcar lines that is happening alongside this property. And it's, it's happening alongside a lot of the properties that we have for sale. And so I want you guys to be thinking about specific areas in Kansas City that would make sense for you. And <laughs> now Isabella, my daughter is, is home uh, as well. So hi, Isabella. So, what are some of those economic and demographic markers that investors should be looking for? Well, Alex has said it before, I have said it before, and we've definitely highlighted these, but population and job growth are two clear indications of a strong economy. And one of the most recession resistant real estate asset classes to keep our eyes on is the industrial market, right? And, and, and not only the industrial market, but is that space being absorbed? Who is actually leasing out those industrial properties? Are, is your city continuing to build industrial properties? Because typically industrial properties have the most recession resistant jobs. Think about warehousing, transportation, that type of thing. And if you have a lot of that being delivered, people need to man those, those uh, properties. I'm not sure we have a lot of those robots here yet in Kansas City. Last time I checked, it was still physical human beings at those, at those properties. So not only that, does that create multiple jobs, uh, job markets, it also attracts large businesses. And, uh, you know, for example, we're seeing a, a $10 million square foot uptick in the industrial development space, uh, not just alongside the I-49 corridor where you typically see it, but other areas in Kansas City as well. That's more than 210 football fields put together. So the markets are on an 18.4% increase in the industrial square footage between 
uh, January 2014th and September of this year. So let's talk about opportunity. Where is the opportunity? Well, the Kansas City Business Journal has more than 100, has reported more than 100 area properties on the CMBS watch list. And we are seeing opportunities come across our desk on a regular basis. I do not think that the everyday investor is going to get a lot of exposure to those properties, those 100 properties that are on the CMBS watch list. You're going to have guys like Abacus, like Morgan, like Blackstone, dr jump into the market and grab those properties up. However, what you will see is the trickle down effect. You will see the mom and pop owners that Alex and I are talking to on a regular basis need to get out of their properties or want to get out of their properties. So I think it's time for, for you to reach out to Alex and I and start to understand what's going on in Kansas City, where the development is, get on our list, start to talk about uh, you know, properties that would make sense for you, start to build your investing team that you need here. I think one of the biggest, and I'm looking at him over here because he's right here, but one of the biggest things that is important to feeling confident about doing a transaction in a new market is building that team, right? And, and we're seeing that be very effective, you know, on a lot of different levels. So from a property manager to a general contractor, all the way to a lender to get your deals done, you guys need to be able to build that relationship and that team um, before you start to feel comfortable in a market. So uh, I, I would say reach out to us today, fill out our buyer intake form, and let's have a conversation. Uh, I'm going to do a selfless plug here because uh, we have a couple properties that are still for sale that I think are really great opportunities. And we've seen a lot of interest on these properties the last week and a half or so, but we do have 901 and 903 Westport Road, which is a mixed use commercial asset right next to where Opus Real Estate is just developed 350 plus units, um, class A multifamily. So highly desirable entertainment and dining district of Westport, short-term rentals on top, retail down on the, on the bottom. I do want to tell you guys, I was talking with the owner over the weekend and since we, we have a vacancy where the old hair salon used to be, we will go ahead or, or he will go ahead and escrow four to six months of market rate um, rent for you so you can have a little bit of a cushion before you need to go, uh, you know, obviously get a new tenant in that space. Since we were this close to getting um, a new tenant in there, we did not. So that is an option to, to kind of mitigate some of your risk uh, on that while you get that leased up. And just so happens, there's three to four great, great leasing agents at Clemens Real Estate that can help you get that space leased up. Lauren Kirby got the other space leased up. I'm sure she'd be happy to, to help do the, the same there um, or bring some more tenants. That's one. The other one is a 31 unit multifamily development right between um, Mac properties where Mac has, my sister lives in one of the old hotel buildings that Mac redeveloped into uh, a nice apartment building, but it's the Windsor Manor uh, property. And this is a unique uh, project in the sense that there's historical and state tax credit available entitlements for you to develop this. The plans are ready to go. You know, the project is there, the appraisal is in, the value is there, the loan is in. It's really just for somebody to come in and say, hey, I'm going to push go on this project. So if that's interesting to you, it's a 31 unit development where you could be, you know, I would say you could be all in somewhere between, I don't know, 65 and 75 and stuff in that corridor selling, you know, 90 to 120 once stabilized, depending on the finishes and the rent. So uh, there is a lot of opportunity there. You do have to take some risk to actually come and develop that property. But that's what I wanted to, to, to share with you guys today. Alex, what else do you have for some closing thoughts? The most important thing you got to think about is there's no real reward without some risk. And so uh, that particular project you just ended on, the Windsor Manor, 31 units. Uh, if you're into any kind of historic tax credits or, hey, let me try something a little bit new with not a ton of risk because everything else is done for you um, and you want to get into the tax credit game, this is just get right into it and get going on it. It's streetcars coming close by or close yeah. enough by that it's going to impact it. So uh, there's not a ton of risk there other than just doing the work. 
Absolutely. Well, that's all we have for you guys this week. It was a little bit of a quicker video. We want to make these a little bit quicker because they are such fun to edit. It's just so much fun to edit these videos. I know Jenica and Audrey just love doing that, but we do want to stay on top of the market. We do want to be your trusted resource. So if you have questions, reach out to us. We're here for you. We're excited about the market. Kansas City's positioned very well for the future. And we have a lot of great projects to bring to you. So Alex, thanks for not only being on the video today, thanks for being in my office studio. And uh, until next time, guys, go make this week a great week and reach out to us. We're looking forward to connecting with you.